I've got a really different and wonderful diary for you. And the reason that I'm doing this different diary, and you can see that I've got a gorgeous, handsome man next to me, <laughs> is that I've been meeting so many inspiring people doing this digital nomad journey. And I wanted to share some of their stories with you. So this is Labour. Hi. And uh, Labour uh, is the founder of Ikigai Co-Living, uh, which is based near Puerto de la Cruz. Uh, I learned more of Labour's story and I wanted to share it with you because it really inspired me and I thought it might do the same for you too. So Labour, can I just um, ask you because up until, when did you form Ikigai? Uh, about almost a year ago. Uh, so yeah. only a year. Yeah. And bit. had you uh, had always had a life plan to form nah, a co-living space? Never. That was very spontaneous. Um, mm. It was an idea that came pretty much post-COVID. Post-COVID. Uh, because, yeah. I mean, everything has changed. And one of the things that have changed is the way that people work. Mm -hmm. So now that it, now people have a lot more flexibility into choosing where to work. Yeah. And there was a huge demand for that here in Tenerife, but pretty much everywhere in the world. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I've decided to do it in a place that I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important that you feel comfortable in, in your working environment. And so uh, before a year ago, and mm -hmm. you came to Tenerife, you fell in love with it. Yes, very good. And country. yeah, understandable because it is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But so, what did you do before you did this? Um, I was traveling non stop for five years. So, you were traveling for five years yes. non stop? No working. I was just uh, wasting all of my savings. Okay. Um, and I did have some savings left, which I decided to invest on this project. Okay. Um, and, yeah. and what was your job before the five years uh, traveling? I used to be a quality engineer for a construction company. So quality uh, engineer for a construction company. And was that, was it quite a big company? Huge company, yeah. 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 Um, so we, um, we were building um, billion, trillion dollars projects uh, all over the world. Right. Uh, the project that I was assigned to was in Australia. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I made most of my savings. Yeah. Um, but then after that, um, I was I moved back to the United States, and I just didn't feel that that was right. I was making good money. I was, you know, living the American dream. Yeah. But uh, that's what I'm saying. I feel like I was living somebody else's dream, not my dream. Oh, okay. And at some point, I was like, I'm not sure what I want to do or how I want to do. I know that I've always wanted to travel the world. Yeah. And that's what I did. But I think also traveling the world is also what inspired me to do this because. Part of my job here mm -hmm. is to receive guests from all over the world, so it's almost like I'm. Tra it's almost like instead of me traveling, uh, the the world's coming. The world's to me. coming to you. Yeah. Oh, it's your country of origin? Venezuela. Venezuela, mm -hmm. um, and then you obviously got your qualification. Mm -hmm. You've done the corporate world job. Mm -hmm. Then you'd done the traveling. Mm -hmm. Thought to yourself, do you know what? I love adventure. I love meeting people of different cultures from different countries. So how can I combine that with my newfound love of Tenerife? Yeah, I think also so, um, right. one of the things that, that was a factor is that uh, I probably stay easily in over a hundred hostels or accommodations wow. in general. Yeah. You know, because I was jumping from country to country. Mm -hmm. And so I think like I also feel like I had maybe not the knowledge as uh, somebody that worked in a hostel, but at least as a, as a client or talking to yeah. other people, be like, okay, what what is needed? What, what do people look yeah. for? Things like that. So even though this is not a hostel, um, it's, it still shares a lot of the the common um, the common things that, that a hostel will have, which is mm. community living. In a way, you had the ideal user experience <laughs> yeah, yeah, before sure. starting this because yeah. you'd stayed in so many places mm -hmm. and had so that. So thing with it, uh, with this co-living, but at mm -hmm. least with mine, is that I kind of design every space as if it were my own. Yeah. So, for example, the the mattresses or the or the furniture or anything that is that that is here in the house is if I will use it. So, like yeah. I will comfortably sleep in the room that I sent to you. Yeah. Because that's just the way I like it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, don't, I try not to compromise on on that. 
Oh. And I can vouch because obviously <laughs> I have stayed at Ikigai, where it's sort of very comfortable <laughs> and the linen is lovely yeah. and everything like that. So what's really impressed me when I heard your story is that you clearly knew what you didn't want, which was the corporate life. Mm -hmm. um, and you were then open to traveling and exploring and experimenting. And then when you got to Tenerife and with the co-live experience and the demand created by the pandemic, mm -hmm. you immediately thought, this is my dream and my vision. Yep. And you grabbed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think most of I'm very impulsive. Uh, which it might be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Someone said that to me once. Okay. Someone said to impulsive. me that I'm impulsive. Okay. And I said I prefer decisive. That works too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very used to taking leaps of faith. I mean, I did it when I quit my job as well. Like, I remember the words of my boss saying, like, that's the worst decision of your life. The worst decision like, of yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, sure. But that was my decision, you know what I mean? Like, um, then I'll deal with the consequences. Like, we should concentrate more of listening to ourselves mm -hmm. and the intuition. Mm. Um, usually listening to intuition is very rare that you will go wrong. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank you for taking time mm -hmm. to have a chat. I'm just going to show uh, the outside, the, the view yeah. that I've really been enjoying while being here. Is that all right with you? Yeah, sure. I'll open the yeah, yeah. So, you can... so I, I joked to a friend the other day that I hadn't realised that I wanted a banana plantation for an office view before, until before I had one, well, until I had one. Uh, pretty spectacular location. So uh, let's just get us both in view and uh, bye from bye. San Nicolas. See ya.